For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them right. Hey, praise God. He's the we are the reason that's right for the cross he bore. Oh my friend. Praise his name. Well, I've just simply titled a message this morning, God loves you. <laughs> Brother, he does. And me. John chapter 17. Appreciate those songs and, and uh, praise God. Anybody glad you saved? Hey. I'll tell you, I'm glad I'm saved this morning. I'm glad for the cross that he bore. Love would not be denied. Go right along with the message this morning. Simply, God loves you. John 17, if you'll drop down to verse 18 with me, those who are able to stand, you stand. If not you, stand in your heart. And uh, read with me verse 18 through 26. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, watch this now, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe and that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, thou in me, they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. I want you to underline, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, and that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For lo, thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Father, please help us this morning. You, you said clearly in John 15 that we could do nothing without you. But Lord, you also said through Christ we can do all things. And so this morning, would you come and help us to do all things? We've been praying for a great move of God, a great revival in our church, Lord. We just have dried up on the vine. We have kind of dead and fainted. Oh, God, stir us, wake us up, and revive us. Quicken us, as the Old Testament said, revive us again, that thy people may rejoice at thee once again. Please, Lord, move on us this morning. May souls be saved in coming days, even today in coming days. And may great things happen because we serve a great and mighty God. We are so helpless, but you're so almighty. And you promised that you could do a seating abundantly above all we able to ask or think. And so please, go beyond the prayers that have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you what a wonderful fact that God loves us. I mean, He loves, He really loves us. He loves us with what we call agape love, not that phileo love, not the, you know, you and I love phileo love. It's kind of like a love, I love you if you love me. <laughs> no, God's not that way. His is unconditional, isn't it? And uh, He loves mankind. It's a proven fact. I read a little thing in a thing called a gospel mirror recently set up. A banker wanted to get the gospel to some soldiers this many, many years ago. Many years ago, an old, old uh, story. Yet he could not see them in person. So he had someone make several thousand mirrors with John 3.16 printed on the back and the words if you want to see who it is that God loves and for whom he died and sent his son, 
look on the other side. I thought that's pretty neat. That's pretty novel. And yet, you know, I mean, just uh, old rough shoulder soldiers get that and, and read it and, and could look in the mirror. Uh, I think about that's a whole love of God. How rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. Wow. What I tell you. How do we know he loves us? Well, I'm going to start back in creation, and we're going to give you some things. Number one, God created man. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. Uh, my, what a, a, a creation. I was thinking about those uh, creeping things there. Uh, Pat and I were trying to get one of them creeping things out of the church a while ago. They had about a thousand legs on it. Man, that was the fastest thing. I couldn't hardly, I didn't want to kill it, so I finally scooped it up with paper, and he was running all over that paper. Just got him out the door. But God put us over those things, even the creeping things. And you say, well, how does that prove that God loves us? Well, because he's what we call omniscient. It means he knows all things. He's also omnipotent, all-powerful, and uh, omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. But the fact that he knows everything from the end beginning, do you know that he knew we was going to sin against him before he created us? Can you imagine? So he did love us in order to create us. He really did and does. Praise God. What a, what a tender love and care. Make a man out of the dust of the earth. He said in Psalm 139 and verse 14, I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Boy, he knew, the psalmist knew, that God had made him fearfully and wonderfully. He didn't understand all that science does today. You know, they can go in, they can just take one part of the ear or the eye or anything and just amaze you with the facts about it. He didn't even know all of that. But he knew he could see, and that was a wonderful. He knew he could hear, and he knew he could talk, and, and he said, my I, I'll praise you before I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Think about it. You get a cold or something, and you get over it. You, you get it. The body will heal itself. You get something simple. Uh, there are things that need a little more help. And in that case, he gave doctors and medical people a little more knowledge, you know, and, and they can help you too. But uh, uh, the, the fact that he created us, even though he knew what we would do, he knew we would break his Think about that. He knew we'd break his heart. And he created us anyway. That means he loves us. Boy, I'm telling you, there's not a person in this building can say, I don't have anybody to love me. I don't have anybody to love me. Not a person in this world can say that. Now they do. A lot of times people say that, but they're liars. Uh, they're not looking at it right. Because God loves you. God loves me. Boy, we get to get had, had some of that in Sunday school too. And just move right on into the, I'm telling you. But he created us. Number two. Uh, God had fellowship with man. Can you imagine that, knowing what they were going to do? Genesis 3 and verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Well, now God knew where he was physically. But that's the way you get saved. God wants to know where you are spiritually. He wants you to admit it. He wants you to admit it, me to admit it. I mean, once you admit that I'm a sinner, then you, you, you can get saved then. You can have Jesus in the heart. But a lot of people would not admit I've had a lot of people tell me, well, I'm a pretty good fellow. I'm a pretty good fellow. In fact, uh, the, the lady that's in the bulletin we've been praying for, Sherry Sims, is really bad now, really coming close. And she doesn't believe that she's been witnessed to and talked to. And she believes you can get in. God's so good that he'll let everybody in. And he'll not. Oh, my friend, the Bible's very clear on that. But, but the fact of the matter is, because he loved us, even though we were going to sin, and because he knew we were going to do this, and he was having fellowship until it happened. Oh, my friend, he walked with Adam and Eve. Had fellowship with them. Uh, from the day he created them until the day they sinned, of course. And... Uh, 
just remember this, a lot of people that act like that God was lonely and he created man because he was lonely. God doesn't need anything. God does not and never has and never will need anything. He loved us. It's a mystery and it's amazing. A mystery, wonderful mystery that he loved us. Now, why he loved us, I don't know. I don't see much in me to, to love. I don't know about you. But nonetheless, he, he loved man. He created man. And he had fellowship with man. Uh, not because he has to have anything. Hey, man needs God. God doesn't need man, that's for sure. And uh, there are times that uh, man might go around to somebody he has to go around, but most of the time we go around people because we love them, don't we? And we, think we spend time with them, you know, because we just, uh, we, we like that person at least. But uh, God took the initiative so that man could have fellowship with him, didn't he? Boy, I tell you, uh, he had fellowship with man as long as man would let him. And uh, then God, thirdly, number three, God made some rules and gave some rules to man. That's a problem we have in this world today. There's not anybody that wants to follow the rules. Uh, how many times have you read that? Uh, and I think it's in the Bible at least twice, maybe more. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. We're living in that day today, folks. We are living there today. Right back where we were in the book. I think it's the last uh, verse maybe in the book of Judges. And then it's written somewhere else in the Bible. But I want to tell you something. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. All that God gave man rules to live by. Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. That sounds pretty good. We like to eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Uh, for in the day that thou eatest there, thou shalt surely die. Now listen to it. Now if you and I think about all the commands in the Bible, you say, well, I might have forgot some. And I might forget this one. And I might forget even the Ten Commandments, you know. Uh, that, that, that several of them have to stop and think about them. What the one? What the one thing you told them not to do? It's hard to forget that. I mean, just one thing. You can eat everything except... One thing. I thought he was pretty reasonable with it myself. I don't know about you. I thought that's, listen, I'm going to tell you something. Just one tree. One thing. One rule. Oh, you know why God gave rules? Can you imagine a world without any rules? Now you think about that a minute. Without any rules. I wrote a little song on rules for Bible school one year. I got rules. I got rules. I got so many rules. I got the blues. <laughs> Remember that little song? <laughs> I'm the one rule. There to be given. Right, come on, think about that. Man doesn't like rules. But you know what I found out? And I even put it in the song. The rules are for my good. Amen. God gave us rules for our good. God knew it'd be better for them not to know they were naked and not to know all those other things they needed to know. And, and uh, you know, but they wanted to be like God, didn't they? That's what the Satan said, you know. Oh, my friend. It'd be chaos without rules. In fact, we got a little touch of that today. We had a big touch of it back in the days of Noah. I mean, it was bad. I have no idea just how bad it got before it got to, before he sent the, the, the rain and the floods. And uh, think about that. But all oh my soul, with a world without rules, we, we got to have rules. And uh, John chapter 17, verse 17, sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. And, and Tom mentioned that several times this morning. I underlined it in my Bible. I thought, wow, right along there. Sanctify means to set aside, okay? And when he said over there, he sanctified himself. He set himself aside for that. That's what he did. God didn't need to be holy. He is holy. <laughs> Not like that. God created man and sanctified him or set him aside. And he had every right to make the rules and the laws by which he would live. He is the Lord, capital L. The Bible says in Psalm 51 to 53, verse 1, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. You know, it's a, it's a fool. And I've met a lot of them, by the way. A lot of people that claim to be atheists. The Bible calls them fools. I've run into them. Over and over. A lot of young people. They just don't want God to run their lives. That's what the, the problem is. And so they say, well, you know, uh, 
if there's no God, then I don't have to worry about that. Trouble is, the Bible, we're going to be judged by the Bible, and Hebrews 9.27 says, it's appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. That means God is going to do some judging one day. And he has every right to judge. Uh, that word Lord means boss. And so we all understand what a boss is. Amen. And his name means Lord. And when we say Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, we're talking about the boss. And man will give an account one day, whether he believes it or not. Whether he believes, he may believe in evolution, and they're teaching it in schools today. You know they're teaching it in the school that I grew up in. School that I went to, my sister told me they're teaching it. I mean, I just want to, I want to go tear somebody's hair off or something. Or I, do something. I don't know what I want to do because it makes me... Oh, man. One old fella used to say, it make me so mad I could eat a banana. Or what. So I get mad. I'm going to tell you something. I get mad. Wow. I don't like that. I mean, they didn't teach that stuff when I was growing up. Why, they wouldn't have stood for that. Why are we standing for it today? Boy, the devil just kind of got bold. Oh, I'm telling you, my friend, the Bible declares clearly we talked about it. He created man. We talked about it. He had fellowship with man. Talked about it. He gave man rules for his own good. And God's going to hold a rebellious man accountable if he doesn't trust Jesus. Now, those that trust Jesus uh, will be safe because Jesus died and took our sins on him. But for those that refuse and say there's no God or uh, we just uh, floated off the cosmic dust or whatever soup. No, they're going to find themselves in front of a thrice holy God who's going to read probably those very words to them before they are cast into hell. What a sad thing. Oh, number four. Man broke God's rules, didn't he? Turn with me back to this. Hold your finger there and turn with me back to Genesis chapter 3. And uh, let's just look at that brief account just for a moment. Uh, Genesis chapter 3. And uh, verse 1. Let me go one more page. There we go. He says in verse 1, chapter 3, verse 1, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And look there, the temptation. And he said, You can eat anything. And a woman said unto him, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, we like to add things, don't we? You ever seen that? Played that little game, and the time he gets around the room, I mean, it, it don't even sound like what they said to start with, but she's already twisting up God's word. And the servant said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. He's calling God a liar. He's calling God a liar. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, uh, then your eyes shall be open. You shall be as God's knowing good and evil. Well, they're going to know good and evil, but they don't want use God. But I want to tell you, he's lying to her. And she just ate it hook, line, and sinker. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband, whither he did eat. And watch this, the eyes of them, both were open. They knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. That's what man's still trying to do. In every religion that's false and every one where they talk about good works or doing this or that in order to get to heaven, they're trying to sew fig leaves together, trying to do something themselves, something they can do instead of trusting the blood. Kind of like Cain and Abel. Cain trusted in his works and he brought his fruit. And, you know, boy, I bet that fruit was the finest fruit that there was ever. I mean, you think it was probably the most beautiful, the biggest of everything? I believe it was nice. But, oh, my friend, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away? Yeah. Nothing but the blood. That's the only thing. And so uh, he broke the rules. And, and the Bible calls us enemies. Romans 5, 10, for if when we were enemies, we were enemies. We became enemies. God's creation, God's very love and tender love that he had toward us and he created us and, and provided everything that he did. Everything in the garden was, was for man. I mean, he enjoyed it. everything. The animals, I believe they were for man's enjoyment too. But man sinned and went his own way. He believed the devil's lie and he's believing it today. Oh, he fell from that exalted place. That great love that God had for him. Oh my, 
Great was his fault. Romans 1 21 says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Right. But became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professed themselves to be wise, they became fools. I mean, even as, as God was doing things for them, think about that golden calf that they made. I mean, they started worshiping idols uh, like they'd had in Egypt. Oh, my friend, went right back to it after the Red Sea parting, after the water coming out of the rock, after all those blessings that God had done, and, and then destroying all their enemies there behind them. All of that, all the things, they turned right around. I mean, it wasn't no time. Have you noticed how fast all this stuff's happened the last few years to us in America? And you and I that are older, we know how it used to be. You know what? If the world stands, I don't believe it's going to stand as long. I believe Jesus is coming. But if it does, just a little while, you and I will be off the scene. And won't anybody know or remember those things. Right. You think about that. And that's what the devil's hoping for. But I believe Jesus is coming for him. But man went his own way. Sin. Believe the devil's lie. Right. Oh, my friend. But the story doesn't end there. Hallelujah. Boy, I'm glad for that song a while ago. And all those songs we sang, they were about the Lord and about heaven and about Jesus. Number five, God gave his only begotten Amen. son. Hallelujah. I'm glad he made a way. Praise God. As soon as they sinned, he provided a blood sacrifice for them. And he clothed them with the, the garments of righteousness. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, you know it well, but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He proved, that word commended means he proved. He proved his love, given his only begotten son, shed his blood on the cross. Oh, my friend, he proved his great love by giving man rules, and then man sinned against the rules, and he paid the ultimate price by sending Jesus, his own son, the guiltless for the guilty, the sinless for the sinner, the holy for the unholy. He died to pay our sin debt. By the way, that you could never pay and I could never pay. John chapter 1 verse 12, But as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on the name of the Lord. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm so glad that he gave that. And if you're here or even by way of watching us today, and you don't know Jesus, let's just stop right there and talk about the fact that you need to realize you're a sinner. Well, they realized as soon as they ate that forbidden fruit, they realized they were naked. They realized they'd sinned against God. They realized God's not going to be pleased with this. And they ran and hid. And that's what a lot of times people do. They just try to get hidden in their work or in their life. or just And, and you don't want to go to church. That's the reason the churches are empty today. Why? Because people don't want to go and hear the truth. That it reminds them that they're sinners. It reminds them they're going to hell. But if you realize that today and be willing to confess your sin, just ask Jesus to forgive you for all your sins. Trust Him as Lord and Savior. He'll give you the power to become a son of God, a daughter of God, a child of God. Oh, my friend. Oh, my friend, how much does He love us? How much does God love us? That's the title of that. God loves us. He loves us. I read a story about a gentleman who was a professed Christian taken seriously ill and he became troubled about the little bit of love that he had for God and you know sometimes when you got you got to get sick to kind of think about that and think about just uh, what I've been doing or what I've not been doing show my love for him and uh, he began to tell a friend about this and uh, the friend answered him this way he said when I go home from here I expect to take my baby on my knee and I listen to this is tremendous Look into her sweet eyes, listen to her charming prattle, <laughs> and tired as I am, her presence will rest me. For I love that child with unutterable tenderness, but she loves me little. Sound like us? If my heart were breaking, it would not disturb her sleep. If my body were racked with pain, it would not interrupt her play. He said, if I were dead, she'd forget me in a few days. Besides this, she's never brought me a penny. Fact of the matter, she's a constant expense to me. And he said, I'm not rich, but there's not enough money in the world to buy my baby. How is this? 
Does she love me or do I love her? Do I withhold my love until I know she loves me? Am I waiting for her to do something worthy of my love before extending it? All my friends, poor old fellow that was sick and worried about his love toward the God, he began to think about that. Tears began to roll down his face. And he said, oh, I see. It's not my love to God. Ooh, God's love to me. It's God's love to me. That's what God so loved the world. It's not my love to him. I'm like that little child. I mean, you know. I mean, we're, we're careless the way we live for God. I'm telling you, we, we're just heartless sometimes in things that we do or don't do that God's told us. Oh, my friend, it's God's love to me that I'll be thinking of. And you know that ought to make us love him more than ever. It ought to make us love him more than ever. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 10, Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, the blood sacrifice, the holismos, the holistrum, the blood sacrifice, exactly what he is. It's not that we love him. That's not the thing we ought to be uh, uh, emphasizing. We ought to be emphasizing how much he loves me. And his love ought to make us love him all the more. His love for us, when we realize all, what he does for us daily, it ought to make us rejoice all the more. Praise him all. It ought to make us be more faithful. It ought to make us do more and give more and be more. It ought to make us go out there and try to win a lost and dying world. Because that's what he wants us to do. Go ye, all of us, into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. How long has it been since you handed out a tract? <clears throat> How long has it been since you spoke to somebody about it? How long has it been since you told your testimony or give it to somebody? Outside the walls of this building? Boy, if we loved him like we ought to, if we just see his great love to us as we ought to, it'll make us love him more. It'll make us want to do what we've not been doing. It'll make us want to be uh, all we can be because we're going to face him one day at the judgment seat of Christ, we that are Christians. And we'll give an account. We'll give an account for our, our talents, our abilities, the things God's given us to do. And by the way, you say, well, I can't uh, preach, I can't teach, I can't do this. Anybody can be faithful. Mm -hmm. Anybody can hand out a gospel tract. Anybody can go and read the Bible to somebody, uh, Nathaniel, uh, Nathaniel, <laughs> Joel. Joel loves to read the Bible to people. We was out there the other day reading him to, to Jim, Brian, and others, Marie and others. He, he loves to take his Bible with him when we got visiting. Folks, you can do that. You can do that. You can call somebody. You can go by and see them. Take them a bowl of soup. <laughs> Amen. Whatever. Uh, you can do something. You do it because you love Jesus. And really, you do it because he loved us. Because we don't have much love for him. We don't really love him like we ought to. Just like that little baby. Oh, but my friend, he loved us so much. So much. I thank him for suffering for me. I think about his great suffering for me. I think about that. We talk about the death on the cross, but how about before, while he's hanging on the cross and all that suffering? We ought to thank him for suffering for us, taking our hell, taking our punishment, delivering us from the wrath to come. I say again, if you're here, if you're watching, and you're not saved, oh, my friend, today is the day of salvation. Bible says in Isaiah, come now, saith the Lord, though your sins be as uh, scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I'm going to tell you something, there's nothing going to cover up those scarlet sins, but the scarlet blood of Jesus. It'll wash them as white as snow. But your good works and your good deeds and all the money you could give in the world would never pay for your salvation. But all oh, just simply bowing. Just a simple thing. Taking the gift. Receiving the gift of God. Receiving Jesus as your own personal Lord and Savior. That's the best thing you can do. Boy, I tell you, we can't preach any message better than that than talking about Jesus and how much He loves us. Oh, we need to preach on hell and, and I've got, I've been working on one. I think it's about time we preach on hell again. Uh, we'll be doing that for long. But I want to tell you the great love. Oh, the great love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down Man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span.
Remember that song at Calvary. Oh, my friend, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I, I want to tell you, if, if uh, you're not saved, you could be saved today. And uh, we're going to have prayer. And then we're going to have a, a, a song here, uh, verse 2. What number, Tim? Uh, 137. 137. We're going to have to draw a prayer. 137. We're going to start. You have a church again. This time we in Stanley. We uh, acted like we in church. Quit letting the devil uh, do what he's done. Father, in Jesus' name, help us today in this invitation. I pray that every soul will be clear by the time they leave here. And those listening in and watching, I pray if anyone is not saved, that they'll ask Jesus to come into their heart today and that we'll find out about it so we can rejoice with them. In Jesus' name, amen. What was that number again? Thank you for joining us for this week's message from Pastor Billy Balcom. For more information about New Beginning Baptist Church and our ministries, please visit our website at www.nbbc280.org. If you have any questions about our church or comments about this video, please use the contact page on our website or send an email to crane.t at nbbc280.org. May the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace for today and bright hope for tomorrow.